dude. So last time we made a video about this guy, I said in that video that we're making an abnormally high amount of videos about this one specific player because for some reason there just happens to be drama following him around everywhere. From Montreal to Vegas, from Vegas to Carolina, we're talking today about Max Pacioretty, and this topic in this video is a lot worse than all the other videos we've made about Pacioretty in the past few weeks. I get it, he was traded for nothing pretty much to the Carolina Hurricanes despite being a very solid 60-70 point caliber winger, but this topic is a lot worse than that. The last video we talked about how he blamed the Vegas Golden Knights, or he called them out, excuse me, for their lack of accountability in the organization, and how in Montreal you could definitely feel the pressure and you could feel the community, the team, the fans, everybody going out there and putting pressure on you. There was none of that in Vegas, and he made it a point to highlight that on a podcast, but this video is a lot worse than those. Because it turns out, Max Pacioretty, a guy who, as we said, is a very capable scorer, last season he had 37 points in 39 games played, his career high with Vegas was 66 points in 71 games played. This 33-year-old with one year left at $7 million that was sent over to Carolina as a cap dump is not going to exhibit anywhere near that full 82-game season and potentially 70-plus points on the year. Now, the reason I'm saying this is really dramatic is because we actually had ourselves a Twitter account that tweeted this out the other day on August 9th, 2022, 5.16 p.m. Lord Stanley's Warehouse says this, I can't leave this tweet up for long. Max Pacioretty tore his Achilles tendon earlier today and will be out until at least the All-Star break. Now, this is just some random Twitter account with a very low amount of followers, and this tweet was actually deleted a little bit after it was posted. In fact, the entire account was wiped as well. This Twitter user, though, actually was the very first Twitter account on the internet to break not only the Martin Nechosh re-signing that happened a few days ago as well, but the Brent Burns trade too. So even though this Twitter account is as inconspicuous as you could be, there's somebody behind this account that is in the know with the Carolina Hurricanes organization and just went out there for, I guess, the laughs, to make a social media account and just say, hey, the Canes are doing this, the Hurricanes are going to do that, oh, this happened with the Hurricanes, they're making a trade, they're making a signing, Max Pacioretty is out for a very long time. Now, the account is gone now, so you can't go out there and find it, but whoever it is running that account, hey, probably was some sort of a secret agent leaking everything into the media. Now, why they would do that, I have no idea, but it is indeed the status quo confirmed just a little bit later that yes, Max Pacioretty will undergo surgery to repair a torn Achilles tomorrow in Raleigh. He is expected to recover in six months. Now that absolutely sucks, because as we said, Max Pacioretty is very good as a hockey player. He is on the last year of a 7 million AAV deal, and he had a pretty good amount of points last year for the Vegas Golden Knights, all things considered, if you just look at the points per game. And so with Max Pacioretty, a $7 million winger, a guy probably good enough for 65-70 points in a full season, going to the LTIR, it opens up another roster spot in the top six of the Carolina Hurricanes that somebody else is going to have to step up and be able to fill, bearing the Carolina Hurricanes don't make any moves to try to get this roster spot filled instead. With Pacioretty on the IR, that's an extra $7 million they're going to be able to spend, so there are a lot of players that could go out there and fulfill that type of financial commitment. But when it comes to the LTIR, we also had a little radio hit on 99.9 .9 FM The Fan, where Don Waddell, the Carolina Hurricanes GM, said the teams have already been calling them since the Pacioretty news broke. Effectively, he says that he will not Kucherov Pacioretty. Now, Kucherov, in this case, is the verb. We'll keep that in mind as the video goes along. With that in mind, is there anyone you would like to see the Canes get to replace Pacioretty for now, who is supposedly available? That's a conversation for another day. But what Waddell is saying here is pretty much, firstly, teams are calling about Pacioretty ever since it was revealed that he's going to be on the LTIR, and secondly, the plan is not to Kucherov Pacioretty. What does that first part mean? Well, it means that there are other NHL teams going out there and saying, hey, Carolina, Max is out, right? Max is out? 
would you be interested in trading him away for a guy that can actually help out your team? We can take on Pacioretty. We'll take on that $7 million of LTIR space. We'll go out there and actually use him. Why not try to make this move, hey? Let's get another Pacioretty trade done and in the book since you guys got this player for free. Why not use this extra asset and get someone else who is healthy and could actually help out your team? And it's apparent that Don Waddell is saying no. Why would we do that? We want to keep this guy. He's a good player. He's very skilled. He'll come back like we're a good enough team to have been able to make the playoffs and do all the damage that we did without getting Patcher ready for free because we took him on for future considerations. We have Brent Burns, too. This is a good enough team that they should be able to make the playoffs and find themselves in a position without Patcher ready in the lineup. And then there is a conversation saying that they're not going to Kucherov patch already. They're not going to sideline him and say, OK, we're just going to take our time, our very sweet, romantic time with this recovery process. And we're not going to let patch already play before he probably would be able to play in order to keep the LTIR space for ourselves and acquire some extra players and go over the cap by seven million dollars by the postseason. Tampa Bay, I don't want to say they directly did that because... Nikita Kucherov a few seasons ago was out for the entire year, even though he was practicing with the team in a non-contact jersey. Eventually, he actually was taking a part in more practices and everything. So yeah, that 2020-2021 is a huge stain on the visualization of Kucherov's career from 100 points in 2018 to 128 points in 2019, 85 points in 68 games in 2020 to zero points in zero games in 2020-2021, while also being a 32-point guy in 23 games played as they won the gosh darn Stanley Cup for the second year in a row. And then, of course, this season, 69 points, a nice amount of games played for Kucherov there. He's making a high amount of money, so the Tampa Bay Lightning had a lot to gain by keeping Kucherov on the LTIR in a position where a lot of people would conspiracily... Ooh, is that an adverb? I don't really know if that's a proper word. They believe the conspiracy, saying, hey, Kucherov actually was able to play, but the Tampa Bay Lightning made it so they wouldn't be able to do that. In fact, they scheduled his surgery so late into the offseason that it wouldn't really give him a choice but to sit out the entire year. And to that, I'll say that because Nikita Kucherov is the guy he is, we know how good he is at scoring points, if he had any say in that sort of conversation, okay, yeah, let's schedule the surgery right before the season starts so I recover by the time the playoffs begins, rather than I recover like two weeks before the season ends, therefore messing up the entire cap structure, then good on Kucherov for being such a trooper, but man, cap circumvention, baby, it's kind of funny. Don Medell, though, at the end of the day, is saying that there's no plan to do that here with Max Pacioretty. No Kucheroving going around here. And it's apparent that even though other teams are calling, asking about this guy, looking for another Pacioretty trade, the third in the few years that he has been around in this situation, it's apparent that that's not going to happen. So talk to me in the comments your thoughts about Pacioretty. Firstly, it's the Twitter account. The insider person working for the Hurricanes that went out there and said all this stuff about Netshosh and the Brent Burns trade and this injury too. Like, I actually do feel a little bit uncomfortable acknowledging that injury information is being leaked into the media before it's actually announced by the team. Like... Yeah, it doesn't really rub me the right way in the same way that it does for, like, signings and trades, because injuries are injuries, right? They're not really the same. This Twitter account is gone now, so you can't go out there and follow it, but for the short time that it was alive, yeah, that was definitely somebody working in the organization, I feel. Talk to the comments about your thoughts about the Twitter account. Talk to the comments as well about the injury. How do you think the Carolina Hurricanes are going to be able to bounce back? Do you think they trade for somebody to take over that spot and use the $7 million in LTIR space while you can? Or do you see somebody else in the organization already stepping up and filling up that Pacioretty role? Because you got to remember, you didn't lose anything to get Pacioretty in the first place. This is just a free player getting added onto your team because Vegas sucks. And now you have Pacioretty, who is going to be out for a while. It's almost like he didn't even make the trade in the first place, which is a net neutral. There is no gain. There is no loss in this situation. So how are the Hurricanes going to fare? Talk to the comments on your thoughts about this, as well as about the idea of Pacioretty being kucherov and other teams looking to make a trade for this guy because, hey, he's out for six months. Why not go out there and strike while the iron is hot, baby? Talk to the comments on your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. And... Bye.